welcome to another episode of Crosstalk. My name is Kevin Tocci, and this is a regular show that we put together. You've seen all different types of uh, individuals that we've had on here, whether it's uh, you know your local selectmen to folks running for office on the state level, to maybe somebody who might have a business in the area, to maybe uh, somebody who wants to talk about an issue or an event that's coming up. Well. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, have uh, my guest today is an, an individual, a gentleman that you've seen on our channel uh, probably a number of times. He actually has uh, uh, his own business. It's called Finish Dimensions. Uh, he is uh, somebody who does a lot with woodworking. Uh, is a general has been a general contractor. I bring you none other than Mr. Steve O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien. Hi, Kevin. Welcome. Thanks for having me on. Welcome to the show. No need to be nervous. I know that uh, normally, uh, actually, I shouldn't say that because you're you're used to having the cameras. Well, I'm rolling. Used to, I'm used to having my feet in the dirt and up on a ladder, but in the studio, it's a whole different thing. But this is nice. Yeah, you came in. You came in. And you were like, "Wow, this is like yeah. so." Normally, you're used to being the one who's kind of doing. Got the uh, tool belt on and the saw and the um, the ladders and everything else, but this is really uh, a little bit easier. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, we know that you're somebody who does uh, construction. Tell us uh, about your, your upcoming. Well, I grew up in Randolph, and my dad was a, a union carpenter. I remember my dad coming home uh, as, a, as a child. My dad used to come home from work, and he was filthy, filthy dirty. And he, he was just, every day he'd come home, he was filthy dirty. And I used to always... Uh, I, I, I respected my dad because he was such a hard worker. And as I got older, I got to learn a bit, little bit more of what he di actually did. Mm. And the company he worked for, they did a lot of um, restorative work. They actually uh, restored the old North Church. They took the steeple down. Uh, there was a, ma uh, a, a local newspaper. Uh, I think my mom might still have the clipping. And it showed the steeple of the old North Church that they lowered down to the ground. Mm. And they did the work on it down there. But my dad was a part of that. And uh, he worked on uh, King's Chapel in Boston. The company he worked for at the time did a lot of that uh, restorative work. And I can remember back when my dad was in the trades. Uh, my dad's deceased now. Uh, him and I, you know, we used to talk about things. This is before I even got in the trades. Mm. And I, I kind of wanted to get into it. And my dad was... Um, probably the driving force that led me to want to be a carpenter. Uh, I used to do everything around the house with him, and nothing was ever, nothing was ever good enough. My dad was always very um, meticulous, meticulous, and um, I was like a gopher. Get me this, get me that, hand me this, hand me that. So I got to learn all the various tools very quickly, the names of every tool uh, in his toolbox. And it's amazing, uh, as time has gone on, how I've seen these tools become obsolete in the trades, hand tools. Uh, part of the, uh, the toolkit back then, uh, I can remember when I became an apprentice. I became an apprentice carpenter. And by the way, when I became an apprentice carpenter, it was uh, probably the, the happiest day in my life because it was tough to get into. Mm. And my dad had to really pull some strings to get me in. It wasn't easy for him to get me in. Uh, but I did get in, and when I finally got in, it was, uh, you thought I'd get into Harvard. I was so happy. I was just, I got to, uh, just the thought that I'd be able to work with my dad with the tools in Boston, um, I was all excited. What, what, kind, what kind of work did you do? Did you do just basic carpentry, or did it, do, did it, was, it was it more uh, well-rounded than that? Commercial work uh, is, is so much different. It, it's so much different than residential work. Commercial work, you deal with a lot of um, metal studs. We, don't, we didn't use much wood because in, in a commercial building, there's a lot of fire codes and things you have to deal with versus residential. Uh, and, and not only that, but the metal studs, uh, they go up faster than the wood studs. Uh, so I learned how to do metal studs, uh, drywall, um, you name it, all kinds of things, concrete forms. Um, we, we, it just goes on and on and on. I could take up Two hours just telling you. Concrete different. forms, that's, that's probably one of the toughest jobs well, uh, you, to do. And it's, it's something that you do all year round. But it's, uh, I've heard stories about how, how difficult a job that can be at times. 
When you think of concrete forms, most people that haven't been in the <coughs> union, w that are on commercial work, I should say, um, they think of the wooden forms that we use for residential. Um, it's, sometimes you use a, a wooden form, uh, but we were using a lot of the, the, they call them gang forms. And these forms are probably, oh, they could be anywhere in size from 50 feet long by 50 feet high. They, they, they put them in place with cranes, and um, it's, a, it's, it's hard work. You're, you're climbing all day, you're, you're swinging sledgehammers to tie them into each other. Uh, it's real hard, and it's dangerous work, very dangerous work. So uh, you have to, I remember working uh, on a lot of these big jobs, and we used to have safety meetings once a week. We'd have to attend a safety meeting, and the talk was generally about um, keeping a hot hat on, that was the big thing. Mm. And um, just different hazards to be aware of at the site. How big is safety in, in your, your field? Very big. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, safety, it, it, it's, it's always stressed that safety comes first. And there's so many different things. You, you, you just, the, the, the things that you don't see that you have to be uh, alert, especially when people are working above you. Uh, I've had a lot of times people working above me and you could be as safe as can be, but if somebody up above is careless, they can drop something on you. Uh, I've had guys welding over me. Uh, they don't see you down below or they just don't care, whatever the case may be. Uh, and that, that hot molten metal will come down the back of your neck. And let me tell you, I've had that happen a few times and it's not a, not a fun thing. I have to ask you, is, is, is through the early years to where you went from being somebody who was starting out to becoming a general contractor. I mean, what was, what was the graduation from, from being somebody who just got into, you know, into the, the, you know, the, the field, the industry, to being somebody who wanted to be, I mean, to be a general contractor, you could be somebody who's somewhat well-rounded. The test isn't anything that's that easy. Well, it took a lot of years. Uh, like I, 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 I'm still a, uh, a member of the union, but I'm retired. But I hadn't worked in the union in a long time. Uh, I worked 17 years in the union. And um, after 17 years, uh, I, I realized my, my, my children were older um, and I didn't need the insurance as much. My wife went back to work, so we, we used her insurance. And I always wanted to do my own thing because uh, when I was in the union working, there was always down times, w whether it be inclement weather, mm. um, the economy. So there was always a layoff. I mean, you'd work three, four, five, six months, if you were lucky, a year, and then the job is finishing up. If they had nowhere else to send you, you'd get your pink slip. So I always learned to uh, sharpen my skills and I always did things uh, on my own. Uh, I'd put up a deck for somebody or I'd put in a window, uh, shingle a roof, even a small addition I'd do. Right. Uh, and I always liked that because I could get a little more pride out of my work. And when the union would call, I'd go back to work for the union. And, and you know, again, I needed the health insurance uh, and I needed the benefits. And, and the, the benefits were great. So I wouldn't recommend anybody starting out as a young person mm to just go right into their own business because you could do that, but I think you'd get more uh, real world experience to go out there and, and, and work for a company, whether it be union or non-union, it doesn't matter, and get the experience that way and see how things are done. And then when you feel confident enough, uh, get your building license. And now uh, the, new, the new requirements for a building license, uh, normally you'd re re require to, um, renew the building license every two years, mm. and I th believe it's a $100 fee. Well, now what they require us to do, we, I, I have a what they call an unrestricted license, um, and I have to take the maximum uh, hours to, I have to take a course to, um, a refresher course, we'll say, a 12-hour course, and um, this, I will submit that I completed the course with my renewal, and they'll renew my license with the fee. Right. But if I didn't take this refresher course, even if I pay the fee, they won't renew it. Right. So everybody in the state who has a building license now has to take a refresher course, which is a good thing, sure. because it teaches a lot of safety, 
Uh, it, there's a lot of stuff in it that people can get a lot of good out of. So I think it's a good thing. What what, what would you feel would be the what was the most difficult part of the uh, what's the difficult part of learning the trade, and where, was there any unique parts of the trade? Is it this is usually something favorite that some some people like. Some people like might like framing. Some people might like doing the stuff where they're putting up drywall. Some people might be more apt to want to be on the roof and laying down shingles. What would you feel is is the, the thing that you, you've enjoyed about the trade? I liked all of it. I really did. I liked no the, favorites. No favorites at all. Nope. No. I liked all of it. I liked roofing. I, I again. I don't think I'd want to do roofing. Uh, every day of the year. That's why I, I, when, I, when I got into the trade, and please, if you're listening out there and if you're a young person, don't specialize, okay? Why? What happens if, if, if you do that? You, 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 when you specialize, in other words, if all you learn is how to roof, and you could be the best roofer in town, yep. and all of a sudden you, you, your back starts to bother you, your knees start to give out, you're all done. Whereas I learned how to do roofs. I'm not the fastest guy, and, I, and there's a lot of guys a lot better than me at roofing, putting in windows, stuff like that. But I learned a little bit of everything. So I always was able to make an income. Mm. I'd always find work no matter what because I could do a little bit of everything. I wasn't uh, the best at roofing. I wasn't, but as time went on, and again, like I said earlier, your back starts to bother you, your knees start to bother you. You say, gee, I can't lift this heavy stuff anymore. I can't lift sheetrock. I can't, li not like I used to. Right. Uh, I got to fine tune my skills a little. And then you start doing a little finer things like putting up uh, some woodwork and moldings and sure. trim and building mantles. And that's how it culminates into where you want to be. Now you, I, I'm going to use a, uh, a mechanics uh, um, analogy are you the type of guy, if you, you're, you're working in a garage all day long, something goes wrong with your vehicle, if you want to do, do improvements to your vehicle, do you do them yourself or do you, or do you farm it out? Do you find yourself at home or have you found yourself over the years at home doing things to, you know, uh, uh, spruce up your yard or to improve your deck or build a room in your house? If you have you found yourself through the years doing that? Absolutely. And that's why... Uh, uh, that's why I'm he where I'm at today. I've learned to wallpaper. My dad taught me how to wallpaper. People still do that? You know, things go full circle. There was, there's a, there was a time when all we did, everybody wallpapered. Right. And then there was a time where the wallpaper gets stripped off and everything's painted. Like a fad. And it will come back. Yeah. So it's, it's something, once you learn it, you really, it, it, you'll always have it. Okay. So uh, different things like that, you have done that. Uh, and owning a house helps too because you get to, to play around and if you make a mistake it's your house so <laughs> so you get the wife to answer to that's about it right. but um, I've done uh, joint compound uh, when you you, 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 you you tape it over the you put it over the tape and you make your seams nice uh, the only things I really uh, I wouldn't recommend doing unless unless you unless you're crazy because I've tried these two different things and I failed miserably so I learned from that and I said that that's something I hire is sanding a hardwood floor. That's really um, something that it, it's a knack and you can really ruin a floor if you do it wrong. So yeah. you, you don't want to experiment with that. Uh, and plastering. Plastering is another trade in itself where uh, those guys, uh, they do it all the time. It's a re Unless you're doing stucco where you take, take the trowel and slapping it up, making that, if you want a real smooth finish, uh, that takes a real skill. Okay. So that's the two things I would never do again. I've tried them. How has how has the trade, how has construction changed over the 40 years that you've been involved with it? Oh, boy. It's amazing. I was talking to somebody about that the other day, and the technology, the tools, uh, the tools are amazing. It seems like I buy a tool one day, and a week later, it's old. <laughs> They've got a new it's obsolete. I'm telling you, it's obsolete. It's amazing. Yeah. They, 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 it, it's like the computer industry. The, the new technology with yeah. computers. Same thing with tools. If they're always trying to because it's they want to sell new stuff. They want to keep they want to keep selling stuff and sure. they buy they build new stuff all the time. There's new fasteners. There's so much stuff that I, I'm probably not even aware of half of it. 
How did you go from being the guy who was out and you know out building a you know uh, working for a union, building homes or or you know uh, uh, adding uh, an addition to someone's home, having your own business, to being a guy who ended up having your own radio show? Well, that's pretty cool how that all started. I I just. Uh, I had contacted a radio station a while back, probably two years ago, and I had contacted the general manager, and I was going to try to do a little advertising on the radio station. I wanted to ask him if I could do a commercial. And I thought about it, and I said, how about if I did a, did a home improvement show? What would that be all about? How would I go about doing that? And I talked to the general manager, and he told me, uh, how I'd go about that. And I said, that would, I'd like to try that. So I bit the bullet. And I was a little nervous, i got to admit, because uh, I've never talked on a microphone before like that. And, you know, without, like a telephone's different, but a microphone, you don't know who's listening sure. in the area that you're covering. So I, I, I did it. I actually did it for a year uh, after that, after we talked. And um, I had a great deal of fun with that. And people would call in and ask questions. It kept me on my toes. It actually kept me on my toes because I had to always keep learning and, and researching things in case somebody asked me a question. I didn't want to get caught off guard. But there are things out there that um, that I don't know sure. about. But it's, it's impossible to know everything. No, but it's, and it's, I, I, I always said that when I had the radio show. I said if there was someone out there, and even today, uh, if there's somebody out there that, that has a tip or a little trick and they can pass it along, I'd be more than happy to pass it along to other people because that's what it's all about, helping everybody. How, I mean, how much work went into translating what you have, you've built up up here, into putting it into a comprehensive conversation for an hour and making sure that, you know, it was, it was, it was in its simplest form for anybody who's listening at home? I, I have the gift of gab, and you've probably already figured that out. Uh, I've always been a talker, and it's, it's just now I'm, I'm getting to actually use it for a good purpose. Yeah. So uh, I, I try to put things together in my head that, that I know uh, the average person would, would, would we have a problem with because I've had problems with things in the past, and once you, you figure it out and you read about it and you do it, uh, it's not as hard as it might seem. Sometimes people can be intimidated by home improvement projects, and uh, they, a lot of people watch that HGTV, mm. and that's a great help to a lot of people. A lot of people get some help from that. Uh, this is I'm doing a smaller version, of, a much smaller version of that. But, uh, but, it, but it's all about helping, helping each other out. Any memorable moments uh, during a radio show, or any memorable guests that you've had during your radio show? And just so folks know, it was the the Brockton radio station, uh, WXPR, and uh, radio in Brockton that yes. you. You had your show on Saturdays. Uh, anything, any memorable guests that you had that you had a chance to talk with? And you're like, oh, well, that was a good show. I enjoyed that. Oh, wow. We had so many different guests. And that's going back two years ago. Uh, I had a bug guy on. He was pretty cool. He was interesting. Remember the bug guy we had on? Um, and he, he answered a lot of questions. Um, and I, I just had so many good guests on. I, I really can't say it's, one stood out from anyone else. It would else. be fair to pick just one, huh? No, I enjoyed every one of them. Uh, I had uh, I had a, a painting contractor on one time. Yeah. I, I, I I just I had a building inspector on. Uh, I had some really good good guests, and I I missed that on, of having that on the show, uh, having the guests. That was that was fun. Uh, how did you make the jump from from doing a radio show to being in front of a camera. Oh boy, that's a whole different transition, believe me. <laughs> I, I mean, I thought radio was tough. Now I have to talk and look at the camera, look at you know how I look. Um, that was a whole different, what a difference. I, I thought radio was tough, and then, then I got a chance to do the cable show, and I, I said, I'll give it a try, and see how it works out. And it's been challenging, to say the least, but what I are some of the, What are some of the challenges? What are some of the challenges that, that, that you face doing this? Because, because you're up to, I think, what? You're, you've done 10 shows so far. I think we're up to 10, yes. Yeah. yeah. 
it's a heck of a milestone. Some people don't well, even. I some people that. get in with the intention of doing, you know, to thinking that they're going to be doing a show every so often. When they get past the first or second, a lot of times, you know, it's they realize how big of a challenge it is, and you know, you know it's something they put on the back burner until they can either figure out how they can do it on a more regular basis, or you know, it's just it was the thing they experienced and they move on in life. Well, you know, I'll I'll. Tell everybody out there who's, who's watching, what makes it worthwhile to me is when somebody stops me in the street and says, hey, Steve, I like your show. I got some good tips from that. Yeah. That makes my day. When somebody says that to me, or you, somebody sends me an email and, and, and will comment on the show. And, and I have gotten very, I don't think I've gotten one negative response. So... I can take it. So if somebody's got a negative response, bring it on. <laughs> I mean, that's how we learn. I don't. I don't know if I. I don't know if you'd want to push for that. But <laughs> I can. I can. <laughs> what you're saying is, is no. that you're, 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 you you put your information out there willingly yeah. because you're looking to get feedback, whether it's yeah. whether it's on the good side right. or somebody has some kind of critique uh, per se. Exactly. Um, what's been? The, what, what, how has that been a challenge? I mean, you kind of discussed the challenge of when you did it, you know, on the radio, similar challenge to assimilate what you know and be able to put it before the viewers, or is it just like second nature? Well, it's actually, it's easier to do that uh, on, on the video versus on the radio, because I can show somebody how to make the saw cut versus trying to explain it. If, if I'm standing in front of the miter saw and I'm showing how to cut a crown molding, and how to hold the crown molding, it's a lot easier to show it than it is to try to tell it to somebody mm. without visual, they can't visualize. I can visualize. If you were telling me, and you, you, were, you were a tradesman, and you were telling me how to sweat a pipe, or to, um, how, how to do something with, with a fitting or something like that, I know the terminology and I know exactly what they're talking about. But the average homeowner sometimes, not all, but some, uh, they need a little more. They need the visual versus just the audio. Do you have to choose carefully as to what you're what you're showing, where you're not going beyond a certain point, or that it's not? I mean, you have what you have a, a half an hour to, to be able to kind of yeah. break down a certain thing, whether it's uh, you know deck railings or you know covering a pool, stuff like that. Things that you've you've covered in your your previous shows. Do you have to pick choose carefully when you when you're when you're putting forth an idea for a show? Yeah, well, we have to, we talk about it, and we have to uh, go over it and actually try to fit it into 30 minutes. And if, if we can get an, uh, an hour show, we just, we, we do a two-part segment. We'll have a two-part show. And we've, we've done, we might have probably done two shows that are in two parts, I want to say. I believe you are correct. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, it, one of them was, one of them was deck railings. And the countertop. And the countertop, that what we need the countertop, yeah. yeah. Which was, which was, I, I believe, uh, probably one of your more popular ones with the, <laughs> with the, the. That was a fun show. I enjoyed doing that. That was a good show. What was the most, what was probably your most challenging show that you've done so far? Well. Again, we're, t we're 10 in, so, I mean, you know, what was the, what has been your biggest challenge with, with doing shows and has been the most challenging show? The challenge, the, 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 the last show, the ninth show, the, the, the well pump. And it wasn't so much a challenge, it was, it was frustration. Yeah. Uh, when you do a show like that and you're outside, um, you know, you could have a crow land on you, or you, you could <laughs> just have <laughs> something have a dog walk in the background. Or a dog come up behind you. But there was a crew of guys that come in as we were shooting with some chainsaws, and they started cutting trees down right behind us. <laughs> and I remember I was a little bit um, put off by that, but we got through the show okay, and it worked out really well. But that, that was probably my most difficult show in that respect. Uh, but all the shows have gone pretty well. Um, I have a lot to learn about being in front of the camera. So bear with me, people. I'm, I'm getting better every show. Do you enjoy it, though? Do I what? Do you enjoy doing the shows? I do. I love it. That's why I'm doing it. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, you never and know. And like I said earlier, I enjoy, if I can help one person, mm. one person, and one person will, will email me or call me or see me in a parking lot and say they like the show, I'm telling you, money can't buy that. Right. It just can't. 
And I've had that happen. And I've had people come up, introduce themselves, sure. and say, I'm so-and-so. You don't know me, but I know you. Mm. I, I watch your show all the time. Right. And I, I believe, according to my notes, I believe you're on in, I think, like eight communities. That's including two that are here. Yep. Um, let me see. East Bridgewater, right? East Bridgewater. Hanover, Rockland. Not Rockland. Hanover. Hanover. And then Pack TV, which covers Pembroke, Duxbury, Kingston, and Plymouth. Correct. So. And we are also uh, getting set up on YouTube. Uh, and very shortly, uh, I have a website, www.finishdimensions.com. Finish yep. And very soon, uh, there is a link on there now for one or two shows. But very soon, we're going to try to get all the shows on the website. So you can link on through the website yep. and watch, watch any show. So in other words, we have a show on uh, closing your pool, winterizing an in-ground pool. Mm. Uh, you might want to link on to that this time of year when you're going to close your pool rather than wait for it to come move, up right. on the cable. Yeah, yeah. So if, there's a, if you're doing a project, you say, gee, let's see what Steve, if Steve's done one of these uh, installations. And you go through the links and you say, there it is, a steer, a steer installation of balusters. Click on the link and, you, and I'll walk you right through it. We just have a couple of minutes. We've, we've had a, oh, a fantastic conversation. Time go? Here with Mr. Steve O'Brien, who uh, not only is somebody who been in the construction business for 40 years, but is uh, also a, a volunteer here, here at Whitman Hands Community Access doing his own show. Uh, any ideas for future shows? Have you been, you know, as you do the shows, do you come up with more and more ideas? Can we give it, tease us with some future shows <laughs> that we could possibly see from yeah. Steve O'Brien? Sure, I got tons of ideas. Uh, I think we're going to do a show uh, upcoming very shortly on re uh, replace, installing a replacement window. Yep. Uh, we've, I've got some ideas about uh, building uh, a petition, sheetrocking it, and joint compounding. Uh, maybe installing some crown molding, some wainscoting, uh, installing an interior door. Oh, I've got tons of ideas. And if any of the listeners out uh, any of the viewers, I'm sorry, that's my radio talk. Yeah. Any of the viewers out there have any comments that they might want to see on a show, uh, feel free to just shoot me an email. And you can get all my contact information from my website. And you can shoot me an email and give me an idea of a show you'd like to see, and maybe I can get something going for you. Yeah, because you, you definitely, I believe, welcome all, all folks to, oh, yeah. to send you and do your yeah. email address. Uh, we have fl flat, we'll be flashing that up on the screen before we, uh, we head out if we haven't already. Okay. Uh, anything you want to say in closing, my friend? Well, I want to thank you, Kevin, uh, and Whitman Hanson Community Cable TV. Uh, you guys have been great. And if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here today. So um, if anybody should be thanked, it should be you guys. I'm just a cog in the wheel. Yeah, but you're a heck of a cog. And we, we, <laughs> well, and, and we, we always advocate for folks, if you want to come on down and, and do a show, uh, Steve's a perfect example of somebody who plied a trade that, that he's done for 40 years and has turned it into a conversational piece that people walk up to him every day. If you want to find out more about volunteering here, WHCA, television at gmail.com we can call 781-447-4175 that's all the time that we have we thank you mr o'brien and we you. continued success on uh, on your television program and that my friends is another crosstalk have a great day